eh, la prossima ospite che vi introdurrò eh, è la coordinatrice della Unit Social Cognition in Human Robot Interaction presso l'Istituto Italiano di Tecnologia. Ci parlerà di come la robotica è in grado di aiutare i bambini con una diagnosi di autismo. Signore e signori, è un grande onore, Agnieszka Wikowska. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, uh, Alice. It's great to be here. And uh, today I came here to tell you about my passion, passion for robots. Yeah, I like robots, especially if they're as cute as this one. So this is iCub. iCub is a humanoid robot designed and developed at our institute, the Italian Institute of Technology. Um, well, today I'll tell you a story about how humans and robots can work together to design a better future, a more inclusive future for all of us. I'll be talking about social robots. So what are social robots? Social robots are... Um, the focus of an entire field of so-called social robotics. And um, social robotics has this vision that you will see here. The vision of having robots among us, helping us in daily activities, in elderly care, in child care, making us happy. And we would really, really like to get there. But well, it's a long, long, long way to get there. We still need to do a lot of research in robotics and in AI. But when uh, doing research in robotics and AI, we cannot forget about the human in human robot interaction, the human side of that interaction, of the social robotics interaction with humans. So when I say about the human side, what I mean is understanding the human social cognition, the social signals that we um, give and receive every day when we interact with others. So um, what, do I, what do I mean by social signals and social cognition? Well, think about gaze, looking into the eyes of another person. Uh, looking into the eyes of the other person is extremely important. It has a lot of information and carries communicative content. We interpret gaze um, and we interpret gaze differently depending on what context it is and what sort of, for example, duration the gaze has. So I'm pretty sure each of you understands the importance of looking into one's eyes, someone else's eyes. And I'm pretty sure you do it very automatically when you interact with others. You know when it's comfortable um, in terms of the, the duration of, of a gaze. And I'm pretty sure that each one of you has had that experience of interacting with someone who gazes in your eyes too long or too short. Um, so and then it becomes very strange, right? But what is too long and what is too short? If I ask you, you wouldn't be able to tell me. Is it 20 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, one second? We don't know, but our brain does. And that's very important. Our brain uses kind of implicitly, automatically, these kind of mechanisms. So this is what we study in our lab. We look at how our brains actually process this kind of social signals. And we do that with um, a methodology from cognitive neuroscience. So what you see here is a, is a participant of our experiment, and she's wearing electrodes. We're measuring her brain activity when she's interacting with the robot. And we're measuring also her eye movements when she's interacting with the robot. And that tells us something about her attention and the duration, for example, of gaze, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, this will be, in this video, you'll see just um, 
an example of an experiment where um, our participants are involved in interaction with the robot. Please play the video. Um, and as they're interacting uh, with the robot, what happens is that the robot gazes at them and they need to do a task. In our, um, ex in our experiment, we have shown that actually um, the gaze in this case doesn't really help participants in the performance. But this was all um, sort of um, fundamental research about the gaze. What are the implications for society of um, this kind of research. So I was, uh, as was announced earlier, what we are interested in is measuring these social signals in order to design robots for applications for healthcare and specifically robot-assisted therapy for children diagnosed with autism. So one thing that children with autism do not um, process as efficiently as um, neurotypical children is actually um, gaze. And so we can use robots to help children diagnosed with autism in developing their social skills. Now you would think, why? Why would you use robots for children with autism? Well, it has been shown in literature that children with autism are very keen on interacting with technology and with robots, and they're very, very happy to do these kind of trainings that we do. So um, in this video, what you can see if the video <laughs> is played. Please play the video. Um, you will see a child uh, that is engaged in an interaction with the robot. And uh, the child is um, kind of practicing a type of you know, daily activities of being in, for example, um, a cinema place where they need to buy a ticket to the cinema and the robot engages them in, um, for example, mutual gaze or pointing gestures showing the child where to look and um, showing them what, which one of the movies they would want to buy the ticket for. So being able to understand these kind of signals pointing or um, gazing towards a direction, this is also something not very trivial for, for children diagnosed with autism. And because they're very, very happy to interact with robots, they, we use those robots to train these kind of um, social uh, cognition skills. And actually, um, our ICAP robot has been um, now for almost two years in the rehabilitation center, um, Bojano Pico. It is a branch of uh, the Don Orione Foundation in Genova, where our kids, um, the kids diagnosed with autism, they interact uh, twice a week for uh, several weeks. And our data show that they improve in social cognition skills after several weeks of interaction. The important here, a point to mention here is that the way we test children's um, skills in social interaction is with a therapist. So we look at how they uh, respond to social uh, cognition and uh, so these kind of social signals with the therapist before the training, then we do the training, and then we test them again after um, the training. And we show improvement that is uh, significantly better compared to standard uh, training that they um, undergo usually. So um, with this, I would like to conclude and tell you the final um, point of what uh, my message here is, is that by using fundamental research, we, and robots, humanoid robots, we try to understand um, the way human brain works. And we understand this because it's fascinating to know how the brain works also in interaction with artificial agents. But we also try to understand this for the sake of designing better robots, those that are better attuned to the needs of our brains. And the needs of brains of neurotypical 
uh, people, but also those who have special needs. So I hope with this kind of approach, we'll be able to design together with the robots um, a better and more inclusive future for all of us humans. Thank you very much.